What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you are new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car, truck, SUV reviews on YouTube. And today, we are in the brand new 2023 Toyota BZ4X, courtesy of Younger Toyota in Hagerstown, Maryland. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. And so today, we are in this one because this is a fully electric SUV from Toyota. It is brand new for 2023 as well. And just for everyone who always has this question, as far as the warranty goes for the EV drive components, that is going to be covered for eight years or 100,000 miles. I know everyone, that's always like the first question they ask, but ultimately in this video, we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, all that fun stuff. So having said all that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, Let's start with pricing. And so there will be a couple different configurations for the BZ4X. First one being the XLE front wheel drive for $42,000 even, XLE all wheel drive for $44,080, limited front wheel drive for $46,700, and lastly, the limited all wheel drive, the one we have today, starting at $48,780. And so there's actually two different power plants we're going to call them one for the front wheel drive configuration the other for the all-wheel drive and so the front wheel drive is going to be powered by a single electric motor giving you 201 horsepower 196 pound feet of torque as far as the range goes it's going to differ between the trim levels for the xle it comes in at 252 miles which is plenty respectable there and for the limited 242 miles so definitely pretty nice there as well and toyota says at a dc fast charger this thing is going to charge up to 80 percent in less than an hour so pretty much on point there as well but then you got the dual electric motor version belonging to the all-wheel drive configurations that one puts out 214 horsepower 248 pound-feet of torque 0 to 60 time coming in at approximately 6.4 seconds we're going to do that acceleration here in a little bit but as far as the range goes for that one 228 miles for the xle and 222 miles then for the limited and by the way i did want to also mention for either configuration you get one year of free charging at any ev go location that you can find so i just wanted to mention that Although if you're smart, you're probably just gonna call an electrician and have a home charger put in. That's what I would do. But anyways, now that we've got all of that out of the way, I do wanna mention the drive modes. They are located just to the right of the shifter. And by the way, shifter is 100% different than anything I've ever seen before. So let me quickly go over that. Essentially, you push it down and then you turn it to the left for reverse, push it down, turn it to the right for drive, and then you simply just press in for neutral. And then the P button is obviously for park. So a little bit different configuration there. But drive modes, back to them. They will include eco, normal, and snow. That's going to be the standard drive modes. But if you go with the all-wheel drive, you're going to get some off-road drive modes as well. And they're going to include snow and dirt, deep snow and mud. And there's some grip control modes then as well if you were to go with that all-wheel drive configuration. But now that I've got all of that out of the way, what do you guys say? Let's go ahead and find a straightaway. Let's put the acceleration here to the test. I always enjoy acceleration tests in electric cars, and maybe we'll see why here in a second, but let's go ahead and put this thing to the test, and let's see how quickly we can get this one here up to speed. All right, there we go. We got her straight away in three, two, one, go. Instant. Sounds like a little fighter jet. <laughs> this thing is fun, man. Definitely, 100%. Not gonna have any issues merging onto the highway. No, don't get me wrong. It's not gonna be as fast as like a, a long range Model 3 or something like that or a Model Y, but still, that is plenty. Uh, what you find with fast cars is you don't usually use the power as much as you think you're gonna use it. Having owned a Ford Mustang GT that was pretty modified, I can tell you there's not really that many opportunities. So quite honestly, the power in this thing is plenty. Definitely enough to put a smile on your face. I love accelerations in electric cars because it usually feels a lot quicker than the numbers lead it on to believe. So big fan of the acceleration in the BZ4X. But anyways, let's go ahead and touch on the braking because as always, that is equally important. So as up front, you will find 12.9 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 12.5 inch ventilated rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, that is going to come in at 125 feet. As far as braking feel goes, it's fine. Yeah, that definitely feels perfectly fine. It's pretty much as I would expect. It's kind of on the firmer side of things as well in terms of the braking feel. So I'm a big fan of that because you don't always get that in SUVs, especially electric vehicles. A lot of times with electric vehicles, the braking feel is super wonky, but that is not the case here in the BZ4X. So for that reason, 100% on point. It feels like a, a 
gasoline powered braking feel. I'll put it that way, which is a very good thing, at least in my personal opinion. But anyways, did want to also mention with the braking, there is no full one pedal drive mode like you typically find in most other SUVs. It's probably one thing I would uh, switch up if I were toy at least in the future maybe. But anyways, then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're going to get an independent McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, we're going 55 miles per hour right now. Honestly, it's super smooth. More so than I would expect without this being an adaptive damping suspension or uh, air suspension or anything like that. This is an incredibly smooth ride. Definitely didn't expect this kind of ride quality from the BZ4X, but touching on steering feel is probably the first thing I noticed. I feel like every electric vehicle I drive, it's a heavy steering feel, and it's, it's kind of like a go-kart almost. It feels great. It feels like the Tesla Model Y that I reviewed a few months back. So definitely on the heavier side of things, I absolutely love the steering feel in the BZ4X, so no issues there. Touching on cabin noise, again, still going 55 miles per hour. Uh, you get a little bit of road noise, but for the most part, for an electric car at least, it's 100% on point. There's no engine noise, obviously. So I, I don't mind the cabin noise in this thing. Touching on visibility, I can see 100% perfectly fine out the back. So again, not gonna have any issues there. Also wanna mention though, rain sensing windshield wipers do come standard on both trim levels. So essentially what that is, is whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers. So it's kind of like automatic headlights. It's just one less thing you gotta worry about there as well. So that's quite brilliant. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2023 Toyota BZ4X. All right, you guys, here she is, the new 2023 Toyota BZ4X finished in wind chill pearl the combination with that gloss black exterior as well but definitely a very unique look really looks like nothing else on the road let me know in the comments if you're digging the styling of this one but there are plenty of two-tone color options including the one that we have today available they don't come standard necessarily but they are available so did want to mention that as far as where this thing is made this one is made in japan you can tell by the uh, letter j on the first character of the vin there so a little fun fact for you there but as always let's go ahead and start up front of course you are not going to find a front grill it is is not needed in electric vehicles hence the reason why it is not there so anyways to the sides by led projector headlights are going to come standard on the xle that comes with led daytime running lights and the automatic feature and automatic high beam so when you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction it's going to automatically dim that back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so big fan of that but if you do go with the limited you do get multi LED headlights. You guys can see we have multiple little LED projector headlights up front there. So a little added illumination comparatively speaking to the XLE trim level. So didn't want to mention that. But now let's go ahead and jump up to the hood here because Toyota calls this a hammerhead hood with black painted accents. So that is what they call it. It's kind of a cool looking hood. Again, definitely different. So big fan of that and I like the little creases on the uh, black portion of the hood up top there as well so that looks pretty darn good and in case you guys couldn't tell there's some um, black uh, accents on the corners here and that's going to kind of emphasize or highlight the front air curtains which help direct air around the wheel and tire combination around the side there so a little better aerodynamics yet again but overall again let me know what you think of the styling in the comment section below but that pretty much rounds out the front end let's now go ahead and make our way to the side all right so now since we are around to the side of the bz4x chrome upper window trim does come standard across the board gloss black roof again is going to be optional we got that so i wanted to emphasize that rear privacy glass is going to come standard of course i like that taking a look at the side mirrors they are gloss black power adjustable side mirrors they will be heated they're also though power folding with puddle lights so those last two you typically don't find standard so i am a big fan of that you do have some gloss black accents found on the fenders of course and uh, the side skirts as well take a look down then at the wheel setup 18 inch alloy wheels with covers for the xle and then 20 inch machine finished multi-spoke alloys for the limited that we have today so definitely looks good there but anyways it pretty much rounds out the side profile so now go ahead and make our way to the back all right so now since we are around to the back of this one gloss black shark fin antenna all the way to the top you kind of had dual rear spoilers and the rear spoilers on this thing are pretty darn aggressive as well so i want to get a little bit up close and there's kind of a integrated brake light just below that upper rear spoiler on the inside there but you got that upper rear spoiler and then you got this lower rear spoiler as well so 
so double duty there that is pretty cool but no rear window wiper sometimes you get that on suvs but i suppose toyota felt like it wasn't needed here on the bz4x so that is not present led taillights do come standard and i love the design on these led taillights so it's kind of like horizontal bars going through it all definitely looks very good bz4x of course badging back there by the way bz stands for beyond zero it's kind of a toyota's electric lineup that's what you're going to be looking for there and of course just below everything there is no exhaust outlet because this is an electric vehicle after all so Having said that, let's just go ahead and stay in the back here and let's move on to the interior. All right, so but now since we are around back of the BZ4X, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a hands-free foot activated powered lift gate if you go with the limited trim level only. So we do have that. So all I need to do is simply kick my foot underneath. It's gonna automatically open up for me if my hands were full. So did wanna emphasize that. And there's also the little rubberized button on the uh, lift gate itself. So that's the power lift gate portion of it. So that is pretty cool. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 38.8 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, of course, his rear seats do fold down, bumping that up 56.1 cubic feet then. There is a cargo cover that comes standard back there. There is LED cargo lighting that comes standard as well. And there is some in-floor storage if you lift up underneath of that cargo floor, and that's probably gonna be for the charging cables and everything. So that's where you're gonna put that. You could probably put an ice scraper back there, of course, as well, but a lot of grocery bag hooks as well back there. So quite a bit going on. But now let's go ahead and make our way up to the rear leg room. And that is going to come in at 35.3 inches. So for reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had in those rear seats. Rear ventilation is going to come standard. There are two rear USB charging ports for both trim levels levels coming standard. I like that. Heated rear seats are actually going to be optional on the limited. We do have that option. So it's spoil the rear passengers a little bit there. Rear center armrest with cup holders. I like that. And I liked it even more because there's kind of like a, a slot where you can put maybe a larger tablet kind of slotted in there or your cell phone for that matter. But I do like that. I could see my kids using that in the back there, but rear ambient floor lighting coming standard. I was a big fan of that. And of course you're going to get front seat bat mat pocket it's then as well so pretty much everything you could possibly want in the back seats then but then make our way up to the front seats a fabric soft tax combination is going to come on the xle as far as finishes go but you're just going to get a flat soft tax finish then for the limited that we have today which is plenty fine eight-way power driver seat with power lumbar for the limited heated and ventilated front seats for the limited as well and it, you can get heated front seats on the xle but it is an option for the xle then but overall seating was plenty comfortable the lumbar adjustment was plenty plenty fine so definitely didn't have any issues there then take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it is actually leather wrapped for both trim levels so big fan of that and if you were to go with the limited it is going to be a heated steering wheel then as well for those super cold days in western maryland kind of like today it is 42 degrees out right now that is cold but now let's go ahead and make our way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key essentially all of your buttons are located on one side of the key got lock unlock that button to pop the rear tailgate there and uh hold button for ac so that is pretty cool so it is all keyless entry with push button start ultimately though so all i am going to do here is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the air vents there and so once started up this is one of my favorite parts about the uh, bz4x here seven inch digital gauge cluster it looks kind of similar to the volkswagen id4 i remember driving but it is kind of like a little video game gauge cluster. I think it's so stinking cool. And the fact that it sits back so far and a little bit higher, it kind of helps you keep your eyes on the road a lot better too than your traditional gauge cluster. So it's kind of like you're driving a car in a video game. I think that's so cool the way the gauge cluster is set up. It gives you your outside temperature, of course, how many miles you have left until you have to recharge as expected, uh, what gear you're in. It gives you the digital speed readout and uh, time of day and a couple safety features as well. So pretty much everything you could possibly want on those digital gauges. And I, like I said, the design of it, I absolutely love. I liked it in the Volkswagen too. So anyways, then make our way to overall interior quality. Panoramic glass roof for the power sunshade comes standard. I absolutely love that. LED interior lighting to matched LED cargo lighting, of course. Dual zone climate control coming standard. There is a wireless phone charger and it's located kind of within this kind of translucent uh, cover here. So I thought that was pretty cool too. So got the wireless phone charger standard. Auto dimming rear view mirror with home light controls are gonna come standard on the limited trim level only. And that's for up to three different garage doors just below that mirror there. There's a little bit of 
in kind of hidden storage below the wireless phone charger in this center deck here. So you got a 12 volt power outlet down there. There's a uh, charging port. There's a little place to put your cell phone, a little bit of a kind of carpeted kind of storage area down there. And this is where the owner's manual is right now as well. So, but I like that it's hidden because I guess if you're a girl, you could put your purse down there and uh, maybe less people are likely to see it. I don't know, but just behind the wireless phone charger, you do a dual cup holders. And within the center armrest, there's a little bit of storage. Quite honestly, it's not as much as I would expect in a SUV, but there is a little bit. But as far as materials go, some of them I like, some of them could do a little better. Like for example, I love all the gloss black finishes around the shifter and all of that. So a big fan of that. I also like this cool little felt kind of uh, material found just above the passenger side glove box, just behind the uh, infotainment screen as well. What I don't like is we're sitting in a $50,000 car with the door handles in black plastic straight off of the Toyota Corolla. So that I am not a fan of. I would have liked to have seen since this is such an expensive vehicle, maybe uh, they finished that like they finished the Lexus door handles, kind of like a samurai sword design finished in silver, or uh, even the power window buttons are finished in a matte black plastic as well. Even if they coated them in like a silver finish and kept them plastic, that would have been better than the way they currently are. Maybe I'm being nitpicky, but this is a $50,000 SUV, so I would have expected to see something that didn't come off the Corolla. But anyways, now let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen. 12.3 inch color touchscreen display does come standard. Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard Android Auto Apple CarPlay, but it gets better than that wireless Android Auto Apple CarPlay. So that is even better. I absolutely love that. So you got your free navigation through that. So that is pretty cool. Of course, you could check out your charging statistics up there if you wanted to as well. There's, uh, of course, your radio information. So when it comes to the sound systems, six speakers is going to come standard on the XLE but there is a nine speaker JBL sound system with the subwoofer and an external amp for the limited. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out the clarity of this one. That was brilliant. That was really, really good. Honestly, that was an incredible sound system. And I, I've had a Actually, my first car, I put a JBL subwoofer. It was an external one just because I thought it was cool. But that was incredible. Bass was wonderful. Clarity was 100% on point. It sounded like you were at a concert. This is a brilliant sound system for the BZ4X without a doubt. But last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put this thing in reverse, again, push down on the shifter, turn it to the left, you will get a rear view camera coming standard across the board. You will also get though a 360 degree monitor giving you the bird's eye view for the limited trim level only. And of course, this is an electric vehicle. When you do put it in reverse, you're going to kind of get this soft kind of little noise just for uh, anybody on the outside. So they know that you are actually backing up because this thing is extremely quiet because it's an electric vehicle vehicle but as always that is going to lead us into safety and so this thing is not yet rated by IIHS but going off Toyota's history I'm sure it would do just fine there front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well in the back you're gonna have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks top pressure monitoring system but also coming standard Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 and so what that includes is a pre-collision system with pedestrian detection lane departure alert with steering assist lane tracing assist, automatic high beams, dynamic radar, cruise control, and road sign assist then as well. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, again, I absolutely love the digital gauge cluster makes you feel like you're in a video game. This thing is incredibly quick as well, not as quick as a Tesla, but still it's plenty fine for me. Again, you don't use Tesla speed in everyday driving from my personal experience, driving a 500 horsepower Mustang. Toyota reliability, you got that going for you as well. Personally, I would feel a heck of a lot better driving this as opposed to just about all other electric vehicles in terms of reliability just because of Toyota's reputation. As far as room for improvement goes, I got two things. There is no one pedal driving, which I would have loved to have seen because that is such a cool feature on so many other vehicles out there like the Ford Mustang Mach-E, like the Teslas, and just about all other electric vehicles. So I'll put it that way. And the other thing is there are some parts about the interior quality that I probably would change like the Corolla door handles and the plastic on the uh, 
the power window buttons. But other than that, this thing is perfectly fine for me. I actually had a lot of fun in this thing. So let me know what you guys think of the BZ4X in the comment section below. And that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.